This is a bit of a deep dive into this Sabrent USB 2.5 inch 4 bay RAID enclosure, uh, model number DS4RSS. Uh, and I bought this thing uh, a while back, probably in April sometime, and forgot to use it for a while, and I just set it up. And it's a kind of a confusing device. Uh, I've done enough work where I, where I feel pretty confident in the unit at this point, and I just want to let other people know. So anyway, um, this is like the cheapest hardware RAID unit that has four bays in it on, on Amazon. <laughs> it's like $90, uh, which is pretty cool. Uh, but it's really unclear whether it's actually going to work or not. <laughs> uh, so, you know, it's it was kind of a uh, an impulse buy, and I, you know, just wanted to figure out whether my data was actually safe or not, so I, so I went and, and did some work. So there's not many other dedicated 2.5-inch drive 4 bay units on, on Amazon or anywhere else for that matter. Uh, the, it's got a nice vertical vertical design here, like the, the drives in it. Um, I'll pull this off. <laughs> drives in it are are s sort of sit vertical. And this, this uh, top case is actually um, a fan. So you can either leave the, leave the fan top, leave this off to let it sort of radiate heat, or you just put the top on and let the fan blow. I'm not sure whether it sucks or blows. I'm not sure. It was kind of hard to tell. I, I think it blows. It could suck. I don't know. I don't know. It's really hard to tell. Anyway, it works as a, a, a RAID unit. You can do RAID 1, RAID 0, RAID 1, RAID 5, RAID 10. Or you can just use it as a JBOD thing, just a bunch of disks thing. Just It'll show up as individual devices, and you could use that with software RAID if you want. Um, unlike other dev other units... Because it's got four bays, you can actually do RAID 5 and 10, because RAID 5 needs at least three devices, RAID 10 needs four, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and in my experience, it works with Windows, Mac, and Linux. So but why would you not want to buy this thing? Well, if you don't want RAID, you don't, you don't want to buy this thing. Sabrent uh, sells another unit here, which is the, uh, hold on, wait, stop it, which is this one, this four bay one that does not have the RAID, and that's only 50 bucks. So if you don't need RAID, you don't need to spend another 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 forty bucks for the thing. Um, the uh, if you don't want if you want RAID, and you're not kind of a home gamer, you know, and you're not like a small business or something, you know, three people in an office or something, it's probably not suitable because it doesn't really have any any monitoring capabilities or you know it's it's kind of limited in capacity. Um, I mean, it's ninety bucks. You know, what are you gonna say? Uh, there's no there's no software shipped with the unit, so the only way that you can see the array status, the rebuild status of the array, uh, is to actually look at these LEDs down here, which are horrifying because they kind of bleed into each other. So it's it's quite hard to figure out what's going on when you look at the thing. It's it's just not not a great setup. There's no way to see the, if it's in a RAID configuration anyway. There's no way to see the smart well. There's no way to see the smart status, the the, the drive health status. Uh, of individual devices in there. Now, that's not exactly true. I'll show you how to get around that later. Um, there's also no way to up, update the firmware, and that may, there may not be a workaround for that because, and, well, Sabrent doesn't provide any software for the thing, so I don't imagine they're going to release a firmware update because there's no software to update the firmware. So if the firmware has a bug in it, I think you're out of luck. Um, that may or may, may not be true, which I'll, which I'll show a little bit later from, from, from this thing, but... I think I think it's safe to assume that this is a this is a one and done thing. I don't think Sabrent's gonna gonna you know put this out there and keep updating it forever. You know, the Sabrent side, I believe a Japanese or, sorry Chinese company that you know they're gonna put another one of these things out a few years later and forget about this one. So the uh, another reason to not want to use this thing is lack of confidence in the RAID, which I had, uh, which is why I did a bunch of work to try to figure out whether it works or not. And it seems to. Um, a few Amazon reviews. Uh, you know, make claim that the raid doesn't work as expected, and and there's a bit of consternation on YouTube as well. But I'm I'm pretty confident at least raid five works. I haven't tried raid zero, one or ten. Um, I've seen other people claim success with raid zero and one. I've never seen anybody say anything about raid ten. Well, I have seen somebody say something about raid ten, but I don't know whether they were whether it worked or not. Uh, 
And uh, there's no sort of alerting. If a drive fails, the only status you have is the drive lights. So you just got to look at the LEDs. This might be an issue for, for optimists. Because, <laughs> you, you know, if you don't look at the LEDs every once in a while to see if one of them is flashing red, um, and you have it in a configuration that only tolerates one drive loss like RAID 5, if you lose another drive, then you're going to lose your data. So uh, that might be a problem. So in any case, this unit I have in front of me has four identical Toshiba 2 terabyte 5400 RPM spinning, spinning rust disks. Um, I think they're 9.5 millimeter. I forget what the, whether they're 9 has a half or 12 has a half or 15 has I don't I don't remember, but they're, they're 9 millimeter drives. Um, I think these will this will fit 12 mil, millimeter drives in here. Uh, let's do this one. Start. Yeah. Yeah, I think this will fit 12 mil, 12 mil drives. Um, it, it definitely will not fit 15 millimeter drives. I had a couple of those. I'd forgotten they were so big. I intended to put those in here. I just forgot that they were oversized. So when I tried to stick them in, I was like, uh, it doesn't work. Um, so if you have 50 millimeter drives, uh, I bought the, I, what I did instead is I just bought the, those, those 50 millimeter drives were five terabyte drives and they sucked. They kept failing on me. They're Seagates, Barracuda drives. And so it didn't really matter. They were, they, they, they didn't work anyway. So I think for all intents and purposes, the largest drive you're going to be able to fit in here is a two terabyte because I can't find any, anything over two terabytes that's 12 millimeter uh, or nine millimeter, whatever. That's, that's not 15 millimeter. So uh, the effective largest, um, sp you know, set of disks you're going to get in here is four two terabyte drives. So that's eight terabytes. Uh, and of course in RAID setups, some of that is going to be chewed up by, by the RAID overhead. Um, so, you know, in, in my setup, I have four two terabyte drives and I get about six terabytes out of it. So, um, on the back of the thing, if I can turn it around, it's rebuilding right now, which is which is why I'm I'm a little leery of the thing. Um, so on the back of the thing, we have these dip switches. This is set up to RAID five. Then there's this little recess button down here that you, you press when you when you want to reset the RAID configuration or unset the RAID configuration. And be careful when you do that if you have drives in there that are already part of a RAID configuration because they'll be wiped more or less. They, I'm not sure they'll be wiped, but the, but uh, the the drive will consider consider them part of a new array and and will zero out whatever it uses to keep track of the rate stuff. So um, normally the um, the LEDs on the front of the device it's they're kind of hard to see right now. You can see you can probably see on camera that they're flashing a little bit. They're not right now. Oh, they kind of are. Ah. It's really hard to tell because they're they're they, they bleed into each other. It's unclear which one's flashing. It's just it's just super unclear which one's which one's flashing. So, um, <laughs> yeah, uh, I'm, we're gonna plug it into something that'll let us that'll, that'll give it, give us a little bit more um, more information later, but. Uh, the in normal status, if all the drives are in there and they're all working, uh, all those LEDs are blue and nothing's flashing. So I did a benchmark on the thing right out of the box as, when I set up the RAID 5 array, uh, and it was about 240 megabytes per second read and 190 megabytes per second write, which seems about right. You know, I compared it to other people's stuff. That's about right. Uh, the theoretical maximum of 6 gigabits per second, never going to get that with, with spinning rust at least. Um, I don't know how this thing operates with SSDs. I haven't tried it, so I don't know. But of course, if you if it's rebuilding, or you've pulled a drive from the array, you know your, your speed's going to be slower. And um, so, do the drives sleep when they're not used? No, no, they don't. They they keep spinning, as far as I can tell. So they're always spinning. Um, so the the manual of this thing, which we'll pull up here. Says that the four horizontal LEDs each correspond in order with the docking ports one slot, the top LED up here, two, three, four. That is not correct. Um, it, there's actually the other way around. The, ac the actual order 
is the top LED is number four on the inside of the the the, the um, drives are numbered on the inside. So I'm going to put this little LED this little label on here. So we know what the order is four three two one. You see it there, but inside under this lid there are numbers um, you know stamped into each or you know die cast I guess whatever it's molded into. Uh, the plastic next to each one of the drives and number one is over here number two three four So four is the top one and that's over here three is you know, et cetera, et cetera. One is over here. It's, it's it's wrong in the manual. So in any case just so you know um, The let's see here the fan operation so the fan is powerable uh, you could take this top off and the, and the fan stops running. The fan's built into the top or you can shut the fan off by pushing this button. And as you can tell, you can probably hear it on the camera. It's not silent. It's a fan. It makes a little noise. It's not a big deal. If you want, I think, you can uh, remove the top and not use the fan at all because it's going to dissipate heat just, just naturally. But uh, even with the fan, the fan's so weak, I'm not even sure that it's that's doing much. It doesn't seem to be doesn't seem to be sucking or blowing in any particular uh, volume. So I'm not sure even with the t fan top on and the you know and the fan on, or with the, or the fan top off, whether the drives are going to not overheat. They get they get super hot. They're they're super hot inside of there, especially spinning rust. Now SSDs are not going to do that, so not a big deal. So my issue with the thing, my biggest issue was whether this thing was RAID five or not whether this thing had an actual RAID setup or not. And I, I wanted to use RAID 5 uh, because it gave me the most disk space for the fewest disks as opposed to RAID 10, which is which is about half half the half disk space. But still, I can lose a drive and it'll keep chugging. So um, my concern was that in the manual here, which we'll go to, uh, it says... RAID 5, and, and this is how we have it set up right now. And by the way, <laughs> there are four dip switches on the back. Only three of them are used. Whatever. And they get, they're, in the, they're, in the, they're in the reverse order that you would expect. It go, they go one, two, three, left to right. Uh, sorry, right to left, as opposed to one, two, three, left to right. Anyway, you'll figure it out. Uh, but the description of RAID 5 says, disc block level striping with dedicated parity across a minimum of three dives. Now, why they use the word dedicated in there, that freaked me out a little bit, because there is another form of RAID called RAID 4, and that uses a dedicated disk to keep parity on. And parity is the way that RAID 5 performs its magic. Um, basically, it takes the data across, across some number of drives and does this magic X. Or I don't know. I'm not a fucking RAID expert, but I, I'm just saying it does, it does this magic where... Where it computes, where if you're only missing one of the four disks, it can compute what was on that disk from the three other disks using this magic. And in RAID 4, it's still true, but one disk, there's a, there's a disk only dedicated to parity, and there's nothing striped across, there's, the, the parity isn't striped across uh, uh, all the disks in the array. So this kind of freaked me out, and, but what I did was I, um, I pulled all the drives one by one and made sure that it rebuilt after each, you know, I, I, I would, I would turn it on, make sure I could read and write to it. I would turn it off, pull one drive, turn it back on, make sure I could read and write to it in that configuration. Then I would replace the one that I pulled with a, with a fresh drive or a zero drive, one that I had, you know, blown out the GPT on. I would stick that on the drive, turn it back on and let it rebuild. And uh, that worked. And I did that for each drive. I did it for number one, number two, number three, number four. Um, and up until now, I'm not sure what it's doing right now. <laughs> the, the reason it had been flashing before was because it was rebuilding the fourth drive. And, but it, it was operational just a second ago. I think it's still operational. We'll see, we'll see in a second. But as far as I could tell, it, it really is RAID 5. It's not, it's, there was no... There's no dedicated parity disk where I pulled it and nothing worked anymore. So I, I think it's I think it's right. But um, 
So if you remove one, if I removed one disk, it kept chugging. It was not a problem. All right, obviously. And this is this is also why I think it's RAID five. Uh, if if I remove two disks from the thing, it it didn't work, which which makes sense because RAID five won't work, won't won't tolerate two disk failure. And I couldn't really figure out what would happen if a disk actually like failed, like you know, let's say the platter the head crashed or whatever. I mean, it just wasn't something I could simulate here. But you know, other than removing one, the manual says that the LED will flash red on the failed drive, which looks to be doing now. It, it, I think that it thinks drive four has failed, but we're going to find out in a second. No, how the hell would you know <laughs> with, the, with the LEDs? I saw this on a couple occasions, so I know the drive's actually not bad. Um, it, it had flashed red like this for, for, for a couple of days, but then it proved functional later, so maybe it just couldn't cope with the state it was left in the last time, and uh, maybe I turned it on and off at a bad time or something. I don't know. Um, didn't try to add a disk that was too small to an existing RAID array. Don't know what happens then. Uh, didn't try to add a disk that had been formatted in another Sabrent unit or in another in this Sabrent unit on other different RAID scheme. Not a clue. I always zeroed out the drives before I put it in there. I think that's just asking for trouble to do that. Um, I didn't really zero out the drives. I just I just overwrote their 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 uh, well, their GPT information on their uh, AKA M, you know, new version of MBR, whatever. Yeah, you get what I'm talking about. Um, I did not check what it, what happened when you yanked a disc or inserted one while it was already on. I think that's just asking trouble too. I, I don't really care. I, I'm going to, if I need to remove a drive, I'm just going to remove one and, you know, Put one in. I'm, I'm not interested in hot swap here. That's not my, not my bag. Um, when I rebuilt the, when, when I, th this thing will rebuild if no other I/O is happening in about six hours for these two terabyte drives. If, no, if nothing else is going on, it, it can rebuild a single failed drive in about six hours and get get it back to rebuild status. As I understand it, RAID five is the slowest of all possible uh, systems to rebuild, and RAID one or RAID ten should should rebuild a little bit faster. So that's totally acceptable to me. Um, I think that's about the longest you're going to wait for a rebuild on this unit. So so uh, what happens if I shut, a, shut off the unit, yank a drive, turn it back on, <laughs> and so, so that it, you know, now it thinks it only has three drives in it, turn it off again, and then put the same drive I just yanked back into it and turn it back on again. Well, incredibly, under that circumstance, it will start rebuilding. It does not believe that the drive that, that, that you yanked was just used as, as you know, if, if, it, if it had been completely in rebuilt status, it will start rebuilding again, which kind of sucks. Boo! Boo! Oh, well. But what happens if you shut it off during rebuild and uh, then turn it back on right after that? If the disk configuration hasn't changed, if I yanked a drive while it's on or, you know, whatever, it'll just pick up from where it left off, as far as I can tell. And it, it, it did that, seemed to do that without fail, uh, although we'll see now with this drive flashing. So um, what happens if you start rebuilding to one disk? If, if, the, dri if the drive goes out of, uh, out of sync, so, sorry, the array goes out of sync and one of the drives needs to rebuild, then you, while it's rebuilding, you turn it off, you remove that disk and then turn it on, or sorry, put another disk in, turn it on until it starts rebuilding to the new disk, and then turn it off again, put the old disk back in. <laughs> so kind of try, you try, what you're trying to do is like, you know, you, you mistakenly put a new disk in, but now you realize, oh, I should just put the old disk back in. Uh, it starts over at 0%. Yeah, it'll start over. So I think that's just an extended case of what happens if you shut it off, yank a drive, turn it back on, turn it off, put the same drive back in. It's the same thing. So it starts over at 0%. Uh, so if you yank a drive from this thing, um, a single disk, from at least from the RAID 5 configuration, this, this makes perfect sense. It will not be useful in anything else. It, you cannot, you're not going to be able to mount, it, mount the data in another thing, but that's only because it's a RAID 5 disk. It, th this would probably work if it was RAID 1 because they're just mirrors of each other, but RAID 5 is fairly complex and 
data is striped across the drives, and I, I couldn't expect, I wouldn't expect you to be able to pull any disk from any RAID 5 array and just mount the thing. It's just, it's just not how that works. So if you're going to use this thing in a RAID 5 configuration, one thing that I'm still not sure of is that if this unit fails, like if it dies, like the power stops working, um, am I going to be able to pull my disks from this and put it in another unit? Like I'm, I'm definitely not going to be, be able to put it in like a, a Linux RAID array or something like that because I don't think it's the same, the same system. But so what I did was I actually went and bought another unit. And I'm probably going to try to figure that out, you know, because this thing's going to die. And when it does, if it, if it takes all my data with it, I'm going to be a little peeved. Uh, but we'll see. I haven't done that yet. I'm sorry. I'm not, I'm, I'm, train's got to roll, man. I was going to wait till I got the new unit, but train's got to roll. So um, let's see. Uh, we got, uh, okay. So this, what I figured out, out about this unit is that the, the, there's a system on a chip inside of here that, that, that is made by a company named J Micron. And it is a JMS 561U. And I'm going to take a look at that. JMS 561U on J Micron site. This is the J Micron site, jmicron.com. And that thing is. Super speed USB to do SATA Gen 3 Force Brief and SATA copier. I don't know. Um, I mean, it's a it's a it's a unit that is. Wow, look, it started to let's start to flash again. What is up with that thing, man? Anyway, uh, so this is a fairly generic chip, and I think it's been out for a while now. It's like 2013 or something like that. Now it's 2020. Um, but it's, uh, it's used in, uh, other, other enclosures from other manufacturers, not, not just Sabrent. It's used, uh, in, by other manufacturers like StarTech, Oracle, and Cyba, Cyba, as far as I can tell, and probably others. Uh, that's good because it's not a hundred percent bespoke. It just, it, it probably works, <laughs> you know, um, so it's also good for another reason, which I'll show you in a second. Hang on. Whoa, hold, just hang on already. Right. Jeez, God. All right. So one of the really nice things about, about this. Now, I mentioned that you can't, you know, these LEDs just utterly suck, right? Like, you can't really tell what's going on. All the LEDs bleed into each other. You don't know wh whether what's, what's happening. When it, is it rebuilding? What is it doing? Um... There is a piece of software called the Micron Hardware RAID Manager. Uh, sorry, J Micron Hardware RAID Manager. And just out of curiosity, I downloaded it off some shady site on the internet, which I, uh, it's, it's actually fairly scary to run the thing because it's, it, when you pull it up, at least under Windows 7, it says publisher unknown <laughs> after you download it from the internet. <laughs> and it's like, ooh, this thing might have some spyware in it. But in any case, I, I I screwed up my courage and ran it and then plugged the Sabrent unit into it. Well, I should I should show you that now, right now, that I can see this thing. This is what it looks like on my Linux system. Um, this Sabrent device here. And if I, I'm going to take this over here. I don't want you to know how long my passphrase is. I trust you, but not really that much. Um, but... Uh, it's um Oh, come on now. That's bullshit. No way now. Come on. I think I just typed password wrong. Oh, wait. Huh? Hmm? Come on, man. That's not. That's not right. That's not right. That's not right. That's not right. 
This works. I, I tell you, it works. All right, let's do this. Hold on. I'm just going to go over here a second. I'm going to take this over here. You don't have to worry about it. Don't, don't you worry about it. No one yet. There is no one behind the curtain. Oh, hell. Operation not permitted. Hmm. That's interesting. Okay. What I'm going to do is I'm going to stop this video right now. And I'm going to make sure that this works because I'm a little leery of the flashing red thing. And I'll be right back. So, here we are again. Well, uh, this is an unexpected twist. It's not always the case that you watch a YouTube video and you get a twist, is it? But, um, as you can see, the, the Sabrent unit has, it's much more active now. It has a bunch of stuff going on. Who, how would you know what the hell's going on? However, what I wanted to show you, what I intended to show you in a much more organized fashion was this thing called J Micron Hardware Raid Manager, which I now have on the screen. Pardon, pardon the horrible rendering of the thing. I'm actually using VNC to get into the Windows machine, which now this thing is now hooked up to. Uh, I couldn't show this thing through Linux because there's no Linux version of the J Micron Hardware Manager, and I wanted to use this machine to record an OBS, don't worry about it, don't worry about it, it's, it looks like crap, but it's, it's working, so, um, so, what happened was, I, you know, as you saw, I tried to type my passphrase, I typed it three times, it worked no, none of those times, and I was sure I typed it right, um, on the third, on the third trial, <laughs> I was like, wow, I definitely typed that right, uh, and so what I wanted to do was, was take a look at this thing under this, under this J Micron hardware raid manager software. Um, I couldn't try, I can't try to mount the drives, the, 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 the array right now under windows because it is a, it is an X4 a Linux partition that is protected by an encryption system called Lux and windows has no idea what to do with that. I, I couldn't possibly mount that under windows, but I can run this this hardware raid manager as and as you can see, um, I downloaded this, this from some shady site on the internet, as I mentioned, uh, and uh, I plugged the drive, I plugged the device in, and I saw that it was rebuilding. Now, it was rebuilding because right before I made this video, I decided to see what would happen if I unplugged the uh, like I said, if I unplugged the drive, turned the unit on turned it off again and put this in uh, and then turn it back, turn it back on again. And it, like I said, in that case, even though nothing has changed, the, the, there was nothing, there's no way anything could have written to it because the, the, the device had not been mounted onto Linux. It was, it was completely read only. It still started to rebuild that disc. And this disc happens to be disc in, in Sabrent world happens to be disc number four. Um, in J Micron world, that happens to be disc number one, of course, because of course, of course it is. Um, but what it's saying is that, uh, it's rebuilding RAID 5 controller. Uh, I guess P0 means partition zero, disc number one, and it's at 28% right now. So this disc right here is the one that's rebuilding. This, this is not a Sabrent official Sabrin, uh authorized thing or anything. This is just, this just happens to work because it uses this chipset. So as you can see, I have four identical drives in the thing, whatever. Now, after I did this at first, what I did was I said, okay, well, this never happened before when it started to rebuild. I've done, I've done this many times. I've done this with the three other discs. And um, I, I just assumed... <laughs> <laughs> that when I pulled the fourth disc and put it back in, it was rebuilding, that it would be the same. All the other times I pulled a disc and it started to rebuild, I could mount the, mount the array or mount the partition on the array and it would work fine. Um, so, so 
I just assumed there was something, maybe, maybe I had mounted, because I have another enclosure, maybe I had mounted a disc in the other enclosure and it didn't close out the device properly so it couldn't overwrite the dev SDB or something. I just assumed I could reboot and I would, I would then type in my passphrase for this thing, you know, after making sure everything else was off and unplugged and everything, and only the, only the Sabrent was plugged in via USB. And I, I rebooted the machine that I'm recording this on, the Linux machine, and I still couldn't, still couldn't type it. Get the same error. So I said, "Okay, fine." Uh, so then I just went and I got another laptop that has a similar version of Linux on it, and unplugged it from this one, booted booted to Linux on that one, and plugged the Sabrent into that. And it's now, of course, it's still rebuilding while it's doing this, and it had the same problem. So it just cannot mount this drive. And, and at this point, I don't know whether that's because the data is corrupt or whether the drive that it's rebuilding is special. And remember before, famous last words, I said, I think it has RAID 5 um, and not RAID 4. Well, this would, this would be a symptom of it not actually having RAID 5, where you could pull any drive and it would be, it would be available you know, when you pulled just old any drive. One of these drives may be special, and we're going to find out as soon as it stops. But it's going to take about four fucking hours, so I'm going to have to just I'm just going to have to cool my heels, wait for it to rebuild, and we'll see if if the data is corrupt on the drive or whether whether drive four in Sabrent World, drive one in G Micro World, um, it was was indeed special, and you cannot access it while it's rebuilding that particular drive. So we'll see. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stop it again. I'll come back when I know more. All right. This thing's done rebuilding. So I have not checked it yet uh, to see if I can now mount this array, the partition on the array under Linux. We're going to find out. So this is what happens when it successfully rebuilds. And um, click OK. And we don't see any re read reboot status there. So now what I'm going to do is get rid of this whip the llama's ass UI thing and I'm going to unplug it from um, my Windows machine and I'm going to plug it into the Linux machine and we'll see what happens as a result. Let's do this. Unplug. Unplug. We're going to move this over here. It recognizes that it should be a drive. There should be a drive here. And we'll move this over here. I'm going to get rid of the VNC shifter. And we'll see if this actually works. Well, oh, that's right. I got to hide my passphrase again. You know, you people are so untrustworthy. I can't remember it. Oh my god, it doesn't work. This is what I get. <laughs> so, <coughs> I'm not sure I don't I didn't really expect it to work. I I think it is it is hosed. Um, I'm going to try one other thing, and then I'm going to give up. I'm not going to continue with this because clearly, this you know, this really shouldn't happen. I mean, clearly something on the drive is is either corrupt or it's just in some bad state or something. But I'm going to try to shut this thing off and turn it on again. Turn it off. I'm going to turn it back on. And maybe we'll see it pop up, perhaps. Okay. Thing over here again.
must say, uh, this is not what I expected to happen. <laughs> but I'm glad I did it because um, I'm not glad I ordered another one because I can't return this one. It's been it's been several months. I can't return the other one. But uh, clearly, clearly something happened, and I can't imagine a way that this is my fault, to be honest with you, because the whole point of the system is to keep accurate records, redundant records of data on disk, and it failed to do so. So um, whether or not this really had anything to do with it being RAID 4? I don't think so. I think it just screwed up. I think it I think it attempts to be RAID 5, and I think me pulling that other drive and putting it back in, um, you know, it exhibited the same behavior other than corrupting all my data. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, so, yeah. I think this thing's hosed, and... Um, I can't think of anything else to try. I still have <laughs> my script here, which I was reading from, and let's let's uh, uh, let's see if I have anything else to say about this. I don't think so. <laughs> I doubt it highly. Oh, what I was gonna say. Oh, that's right. <clears throat> so, it occurred to me, you know how, how in, in our, uh, let me pull this over here, in our manual here, uh, we have this LED instructions here, and it says that four horizontal LEDs each correspond in order with docking ports one slot, the top LED, which, you know, and it's just in backwards order. So, it occurred to me... You know, the manual is wrong about the ordering of the front panel LEDs, but the manual does show the, the actual order of the, of the, it's, it's kind of hard to read here, but on the, on the right hand image, the, of the, lo looking down into the bays, uh, there's, it, it is labeled as, as the actual unit is labeled. They're not, they're not reversed. So, um, so it's right in both the manual and in reality that, you know, that, that matches reality. It's just that the, the manual is wrong about the, the, the numbering of the front panel LEDs and how they relate to the drive bay numbers. Um, so one theory is that the electronics in the system were supposed to be wired such that the manual was correct, meaning that the LEDs should have been, uh, should have been numbered top to bottom, one through four. And, uh, but I think it, one theory is that somebody screwed up the PCB <laughs> and they had a bunch of PCBs that they had already manufactured and or wiring that they had already manufactured to go into the case that reversed the order. And all this stuff was ready for assembly, but was wrong. And I can imagine an emergency meeting where somebody figured this out and they're like, well, hell, we can't throw away all the money we spent print, <laughs> printing those PCBs. We can't throw away all the money we spent molding those cases. And we did print a, ma a lot of manuals already, so, so what could we do? And, and some genius said, well, there's no numbering on the front of the case, so maybe we could just eventually make an errata for the manual that says, we got it wrong, and they're reversed. And we lose no money, and that man was considered a genius until somebody mentioned that the J-Micron software, which works with this thing, which I think they probably would have shipped, would also reveal there. So not only w w it was the order now wrong in the front panel LEDs, it would also be wrong in the J-Micron software, as we saw. Uh, Sabrance 4 would be J-Micron's 1, et cetera, et cetera. But then, but then another 2B genius piped up and said, I know, I know what to do. Just disinclude the software, problem solved, ship it. Uh, this is unlikely because, it, the, the, you know, if they came up with a scheme after they printed the manual, the manual would likely make mention of the J Micron software, but it's a fun story to think about anyway. But I, th that being said, I suspect an either more convoluted series of shenanigans like this happened at Sabrent HQ, or maybe they wanted to sell, sell this device at a price point that made it impossible to license software. Uh, probably both. It's 90 bucks. What do you expect? 
I mean, I kind of expected it to work, I guess, but it doesn't. So uh, maybe, maybe if it did work, uh, and and maybe there was just a miscommunications in the manufacturing thing. Maybe that's why it's so cheap. They just want to get rid of this thing. But I think they've been selling it for a few years. So I don't know. I have no idea. So, in any case, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep this particular unit, and I'm going to just put it in individual disk mode, and then I'll just use Linux RAID software RAID to make it redundant. I'll just use Linux software RAID to make a RAID 5 array and bypass the the uh, hardware RAID. And I could have saved 40 bucks, just bought the other one, I guess. Um, or I could have bought any number of other other enclosures that have four bays that do not do RAID, but RAID. But, um, I, guess I, sh I guess I should mention, it doesn't really matter at this point, but I only tried this JMicron RAID manager stuff on Windows 7. I didn't try it under Windows 10. Uh, it may not work under there. It's pretty old. Yeah, I, there is a Mac version. Definitely doesn't work under Catalina and Linux. Forget about it. No way. Not a chance. And sometimes I had to reboot uh, the computer or at least restart Windows for for it to see the array if I turned the device on and off. It. Just so you know, it's whatever. And um, I, what I did want to show you is that even if this thing takes a firmware update, which I doubt it highly. I doubt Sabrent will ever release a firmware update for the thing. Um, it, ah, it doesn't matter. I won't even bother showing, showing you the UI. But inside the, J, the, the JMicron hardware rage manager, there is a way to up, update the firmware of the device. And uh, it's clearly custom Sabrent firmware, otherwise the device name that's, that's, that you haven't been able to see. Uh, uh, maybe I can show it here. Maybe, maybe I did show it to you. Yeah. Uh, this Sabrent 6 terabyte hard disk. Uh, obviously, sa sorry, Sabrent Hardware RAID 5. Uh, if it wasn't custom firmware, then the name Sabrent wouldn't be in there. So it would say JMicron or something. Uh, so clearly it's custom firmware at least to change that string in the code. <laughs> um, so while you might be able to flash a new piece of firmware on this thing in the future, I doubt one will ever be released by Sabrent. And you could try to flash some other vendor's firmware on it, like Orico or whatever. Probably, probably work. But that being said, my suspicions about the drive numbering are um, it could be that I, now I, I'm not sure if it's my imagination or not, but I have written down here that even though Sabrent thinks that, uh, well, J. Micron thinks that its drive one is Sabrent's drive four. Um, J. Micron's thinks, uh, part of a read manager thinks that its drive one, or sorry, its drive four is Sabrent's drive three. So it's not just reversed. I, I, I could totally be wrong about this. I, this is, this was, I wrote this down a while ago, and I was utterly confused by it. Because it was just flipped around like a connector was flipped around on the inside or just somebody got something wrong. You wouldn't expect it to be out of order at all. So what I'm thinking is it's possible that the, that the, that the firmware fixes, quote, unquote, the drive light ordering. <laughs> uh, you know, I and flashing, who, first of all, who knows whether flashing another firmware onto this would utterly brick it. And if you did flash another firmware onto it, it would just the, the drive light drive lights may become completely devoid of you know unmoored from reality in any way. They might not even be sequential. So, you know, I did send an email to Sabrent Tech Support not too long ago because I was confused about the LED status. I have not heard back from them lately. Um, I doubt I'm going to really hear back from them. Um, yeah, I. I I think I may have mentioned in this video that I was uh, suspicious that people were thinking that RAID doesn't work on this thing. Um, I apologize for that. <laughs> Although it didn't quite not work in the way that it didn't work for them. But I'm going to link in, uh, uh, to another YouTube video from a guy named Yet Another Michael who has a, has a video about this on Windows that might 
I don't know. It's probably not worth watching any of anything about this unit. You probably just don't want to buy this thing. So anyway, um, thanks for watching. I guess. Oh, I should I should say this. Um, and who knows whether this is good or not? I'm not I'm not recommending it. But Orico does make a three and a half inch uh, unit or a, a, a two units, a four bay and a five bay unit that take three and a half inch discs, not two and a half inch discs. And it does come with a J Micron a re rebadged. It's called a Rico Hardware Raid Manager instead of J Micron Hardware Raid, but it's clearly the same program, same ugly program. Um, maybe that works. I don't know. Uh, at this point, I think I'm just going to stick with Software Raid. I don't think Hardware Raid's for me. All right, thank you so much.